Hello, Dr. Falcon. Uh, my name is Alexey. I'm from Mipam company. And today I want to talk to you about health. Uh, the health of Drupal programmers. I hope that such as this room. Great. So, how do you feel? Good? Are there any complaints? No? Hmm. Maybe it's because there are just no unit test writers here. They are probably busy with finishing their unit tests. But let's start anyway. So, a long, long time ago, in a Drupal version, far, far away, there was a really happy time for programmers. Every programmer could just write the code uh, without suffering with any of these unit tests. And if someone suddenly came with a TDD flag and shouted, let's write unit tests already, they answered that this is not possible without Drupal because it has a lot of services which are impossible to mock. And here you can see a pretty famous quote of Angie Byron about this from far 2015. But since the first pioneer was Jonathan Wage in even more far uh, 2008 for a very old Drupal version 5. Do you remember it? <laughs> uh, he was inspired by this blog post about TDD with Drupal. And uh, he successfully failed it at that time. Seems that it was way too early. But times change, and now we already have almost 30,000 of unit tests in our Drupal core, as you can see here, and even several steps to simplify unit testing. I found only four functions here they are. But also, I found more than 4,000 of active issues that are seriously stuck in the unit test status, and they are stuck there for years without any serious progress. I also set out to see how things are going with that coverage in Drupal core, and was very surprised to find only 15% coverage. It's too little. And uh, one more find that made me think. Both in Drupal core and in contributed modules, I've noticed that they have much more functional tests than unit tests, even more than twice. Since the all developers prefer to write functional ones over unit tests for some reason. So those developers, why do they still not want to write unit tests? And really, why? Try to remember your feeling when you successfully completed writing the unit test after several hours of effort, and it finally turned green. Were you happy? Probably yes. But satisfied? I don't think so. It's because that unit test took you quite a few hours, efforts, and produced a huge number of code lines, much more than the testing function. And here is the usual picture when the actual code takes around five lines, but the unit test requires to write more than 50 lines. Are you familiar with this? <laughs> so let me try to do a little poll. What kind of suffering from unit tests do you have? Please raise the hand who have business, Okay, maybe insomnia, anxiety, <laughs> and <laughs> maybe someone does not have any of the above symptoms. Don't be shy, raise the hands. Oh, I see the hand. But are you sure that you've written exactly the unit test and exactly for Drupal? Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so, I suffered all the symptoms in the past, exactly like you. But no more with my module, Test Helpers. Would you want this too? Let's go. I'll show you the way. Here is a simple Drupal function that just loads three recent articles and builds a list of them. Nothing complex, just 29 lines of code. Here is what it does. Render just a list with three titles and dates and author names. That's it. And now, let's just try to unit test for it using the classical approach. But probably not. The most experienced unit test writers should have noticed already in that code the config factory, entity query, load multiple, loading entities by references, and even to link function. All of these are symptoms that writing the unit test will be a pretty tricky task. And most likely, they will decide to write a kernel test instead. Let's do this too, shall we? Here it is. 
Nothing serious, very simple and short, just 20 lines of code. Execution time is five seconds, not so bad, but this is still not a unit test, it's a functional one. And running a hundred such tests will take already almost 10 minutes in our pipeline. That's not good. And uh, well, we are here to talk about unit tests, not kernel ones. So let's yet brace ourselves and still write the unit test for it using the classical approach. And how many lines of code do you expect in it? Let's get your opinions, shall we? Uh, here you can see a slide uh, from an online pooling platform slider where you can simply vote using your mobile phone. Just scan the core code or open a website and enter the displayed numbers if the core code is too far for you. And wait for the next slide. Uh, here it is. So now just choose the option. And uh, while you are thinking about the right option, try to recall how many lines usually you have in your unit tests. This might get you closer to the correct result. Also, keep the slider page open because we will have more polls on the next slides, so don't close it. And uh, those of you who already voted, you can open the Q&A section in slider and start throwing in tricky questions for me. We will discuss them at the end of the presentation. And I see a lot of votes, and uh, most of you expecting 96 lines and 72 lines, also pretty popular. <laughs> Let's wait for a couple of seconds to finalize. And I see that uh, 96 is the most popular one still. <laughs> okay, let's finish it, and uh, the 96 line is the most popular <laughs> option. Ready to see what I have it for you? For you. And uh, nobody was correct, just because there was no correct answer. <laughs> I ended up with exactly 100 lines. Yes, as many as 100 lines just for our 29 line function. Just three times more lines, five times more than the kernel test. Nothing unusual, because it's a, a unit test. It's doomed to be big. <laughs> but the execution time now is just great, 70 milliseconds. It's 50 times faster than our kernel test, also. And we've got a 100% of the coverage, pretty good. But uh, this 100 lines of code, We've written as many as 43 lines of code just to mock the single NCC query call. And per eight lines of mocking for each node, having 26 lines of mocking in total, just for two nodes. And setting up services for container builder took 23 lines. And suddenly we have all 100 lines filled. Are you satisfied with this? If you ask me, absolutely not. So. Can you imagine a world where to mock an NC query, you can write only a single line of code or create a mock of entity with pre-filled fields also with a single line and have a ready-to-use Drupal container with working core services out of the box? What if I say that I have it for you? Do you take? So, <laughs> I've rewritten the 100-line unit test almost from scratch, but now using the test helpers API. How many lines of code do you expect now? Let's take another short poll. Uh, here it is. So you, you, if you already closed the slide, you can scan the core code again and just vote. So obviously it should be less than 100 lines, but how much? 72, 48, 24, maybe even 12? <laughs> what are feelings? And let's wait for more votes. And I see that you're pretty optimistic <laughs> and have 12 lines as the most popular option. Let's wait a little and uh, remember that you can already start typing some uh, questions uh, which we will discuss at the end of the presentation if you already voted. And I see that 12 lines is the winner here. So let's finish the poll with this, and uh, you are right. I've ended up with exactly 12 lines, eight times less than the classical one. And now it's very short and easy to understand, isn't it? 
And look, it's half size less than the original function, 12 lines versus 29, and even less than our 20 line at kernel test. Let's take a closer look at the unit test code. Here it is. Uh, the first line initializes the provided stub for config factory service, and at the same time creates a new config record with desired values. This makes the highlighted part of the code works out of the box without any manual locks. The second line initiates a date formatter service because we have in the tested function the conversion from time step to string that requires it. And in the same line, we are creating a medium format with desired pattern. Next five lines create the user entity and four nodes with required values. Yes, one line. One entity, not eight line per each, like in the classical approach. And uh, in this line, all the magic happens. The test helpers module initializes the class with passing working stops for all required services and executes our article list function. It automatically provides the working entity type manager service with get storage and get value functions. And it can even execute the entity query right in the unit test context. It checks all query conditions and generates the correct result, like in kernel test, but in unit test, and without any database. It also provides fully working load multiple, so you can just put the list of IDs and get the loaded entities. Date formatter service that convert test up to string using the previously configured pattern. Loading entities by reference and providing the label text also works out of the box. And even to link, produce a correct links to the entity. And the final pretty boring stage when we are asserting the results, it's the same as the classic test, nothing to reduce here. Just checking that the results uh, equals expected ones. And now let's launch the test, shall we? And we've got a uh, hundred percentage of the coverage. Cool. Now let's take a quick look to another approach. Here is the current test that executes the query automatically via a single magic line. But that magic with the entity query works out of the box for now only for simple queries. And for more complex queries with uh, many condition groups, I have another solution. Asserting the crucial conditions and mocking the results manually. Here it is. Uh, this approach works well for any complex query you have, even for database queries, and uh, I'll explain how to use it a little bit later. Now let's launch the second test. And now we've achieved 200% of the coverage. 100 from the previous test plus 100 from this one. So now we've covered it twice. Awesome. <laughs> And since that's all from my side. <laughs> but seems not. <laughs> I saw a couple of unit test writers recently. Even after applying entity stops to pain points, I could still see that they continue suffering. Looks like they need much more help. And I have it. Here is a brief list of pain points that the scalpers covers for now. And let me showcase them one by one. Uh, this is a group of functions to initialize Drupal services, entity storages, and safe entities. They provide fully working stops of the real services and entities that can work well in a unit test context without initializing the Drupal kernel. All saved entities are stored just in memory, including configuration entities. So no files or SQL database is required. Perhaps you want to know what this stub is. And the stub is a fully working class or service adapted to work in the unit test context without Drupal kernel and without database. Here you can see a class that provides a stub for config factory service. So it just extends the original class from Drupal core, initializes all dependencies, sets default values, and provides some helper functions. Let's look how it can be used in real tasks. Here is an example of a simple end subscriber for config save and delete events. It just shows a message about this event, that's it. And here is the test for this subscriber. 
those two lines initialize the stub for messenger and config factory services. After this, we can use them like with a full Drupal kernel. And here we have already two magic lines that do all the work. The first line is for save event and the second for delete event. Under the hood, the helpers checks that the service is really subscribed to the event, has the event subscriber tag, and then executes the assigned function. And this is done automatically without any code from your side. The next group of functions are related to private properties and methods. Using them, you can easily get to set a private or protected property, get and call private methods. But uh, some of you may have heard that using unit testing private methods is considered bad practice. That's right, but not with our Drupal. <laughs> we have a lot of abstract protected functions that we should implement in our custom code. Here you can see a list, list of uh, some functions and actually there are much more of them. And they should be covered in unit tests. I'll show you how test helpers helps you with this. Here is a protected function compute value that contains just three lines of business logic. And we need to call it to check if they works right. But with the classical approach, we should initialize a full instance of the field with a lot of manual mocks just to cover these three lines. And with test helpers, the things are simpler again. Just a single mock and a single assertion. And uh, two magic lines, that's it. Uh, also, Test Helpers already provides fully working stops for many popular Drupal services like database, date formatter, model handler, and so on. You can find the full list of services already covered by stops in the Test Helpers PHP file. On the left side, uh, there are custom stops uh, created over the original service classes. And on the right side, the list of Drupal services that can be initialized in unit tests context without any additional changes. Uh, and if any other core services that not discovered yet, uh, test helpers provide an easy way to initiate a full mock of the service, as you can see in this example. Uh, let's take the renderer service that is not covered for stop, by stop for now in test helpers. And using the method test helper service, you can easily get a mock of it and set the desired return values for required methods. The first example is a classical approach with method uh, will return callback. You probably know it. And the second uh, is already a test helper's feature that, in addition to PHP unit way, allows you to bind a callback function directly to the service class. So you can easily get access to this variable and use all private properties and methods. In the renderer service, the replace a placeholders function is a protected, but you can just call it in your custom uh, callback function. That's very convenient. And you can even initialize your very custom service using the init service method. It will automatically detect the location of your services YAML file in your module, find the related class, and initialize it. Uh, this group of functions uh, is related to entity queries and database queries. Using them, you can check for crucial conditions in the query and set the results of the execute function. And it simplifies the work even for raw SQL queries. Here is an example of usage that you've already seen before. Uh, but you can say that we already can do this using the with consecutive function from PHP unit. Yes, this approach will really work, but until the moment when the order of condition changes. But uh, with test helpers, uh, the order doesn't matter because in real entity queries and the square queries, it doesn't matter too, right? And even if you add new condition, the test will pass too, because by default it uses uh, not strict mode and check only for list conditions. And if you need, you can enable the strict mode uh, by the only listed flag. And without it, as you can see, we've added uh, the promote equals one condition. And we still have a green test because uh, it tests only uh, listed conditions, not the all. And uh, without, uh, you can add them with any order. 
And uh, now I guess you are ready for a more complex example. Let's get the custom service and throw into it some nodes, taxonomy with vocabularies and terms, several users, and to make it really painful, of course, translations and entity reference. Ready? Here it is. The actual code looks not so scary, but uh, believe me, the scary will be when you will start to write the unit test for it. I didn't even try to write it without my test helpers. So here is the test that actively use uh, uh, test helper CPI. Yes, it's not as short as the first example. We have already 41 lines here, but this is still much less than we should write in a classical approach. The classical one can easily take 200 lines or even more. Let's elaborate on this code. Uh, the first line initializes the language manager service and adds two languages, French and German. The second pretty large block is for creating two users, a taxonomy vocabulary with two terms and two nodes. But now for each node, we have not a single line, as I promised. Well, it's because here we are creating not a simple node, a node with two custom fields and with translations. I'll explain how it works. Here is a custom field, field synopsis. It's just a string field, so we should only indicate that it should be translatable. After this line, the field can store translated values, so we just put the translatable true and that's it. And another interesting place is uh, field category. It's not a base field, so we should manually indicate that uh, the type of uh, this field is entity reference, and the target type is taxonomy term. To do this, we just put the array with parameters, and that's it. After this, the highlighted lines in the testing function will start working as a kernel test, so we can just call node field category entity to get the category, and uh, via the category reference, we can get the label of the category, like in kernel test without any additional code. And the next, again, one single line that does all the work for us. After this magic, we need just to call the method the get translation articles list with different languages and assert the results. The first call is with entity with English language, and it should return two values because both nodes have English translation. Uh, the next two calls with French and German language should return only the second node because only it has translations to that language. So the first node have only English translation, and the second node have additional two translations. And that's it. Very simple as, as usual. But perhaps some is, someone is worried that uh, with this approach, it will be not be possible to use the classical methods with mocking any method we want. But don't worry, I'll keep this ability. We are mocking via mock methods parameter, you can pass the list of functions which you want to mock manually using the classical approach. And even add new methods that are missing in the interface for some reason, like send this email as displayed here. And you can even pass a mock of any field to the entity stuff. So just use the create mock method to create a mock of a field and pass it to the field as a value. That's it. And uh, if you have even more customized field with a very custom definition, you can pass the mock of the base field definition like this. And it will be applied not only to the first entity, but for all other entities of this type and bundle too. So you just uh, describe it the, the first call and all other entities will have this information automatically. As you can see here, we are applying the custom definition to entity one but getting it from entity two, and this just works. So I've showcased most popular cases, which test helpers covers for now. But I don't want to stop, and will continue improving the module. I started the development of this module in July 22, released the first alpha version in September. After that, I widely tested the module on several projects gradually added new features with releasing several alpha and beta versions. All other members of our team started to actively use it too and was very happy with this. 
the amount of time spent on the unit test has been significantly reduced by more than five times. So the management was satisfied even more than developers. <laughs> and for now, I've released the first release candidate in April 23 and plan to finally release a stable version in the next month, maybe. And uh, this model seems to be already used not only by us with our couple of projects, but some other people started to use it, as Drupal Org statistics shows. And yes, the chart is going down in the last months, but it's not a negative trend, it's a feature. <laughs> I know that no one likes to install new modules, especially only for unit testing. So no one wants to write something like this in the YAML file of the module and show the dependency on some Alexei. But actually, you don't need to do this. I've invented a workaround for this. My module will not come to your production environment at all because adding a development requirement is enough. So you just uh, use compose required dev, Drupal test helpers, and that's it. And you don't even need to enable this module in Drupal. Just having module files is sufficient. That is why the usage chart in Drupal org goes down, because it counts only enabled modules. You can see an example of this approach in my another module, Open Telemetry, that already now uses test helpers to cover its logic by unit tests. And uh, one more tricky question. Do we need to cover unit test functions by unit test? And my answer, sure. <laughs> and I've covered them. Not 100% yet, but uh, when I have time, I plan to improve this. And yes, I've used test helpers to test test helpers. <laughs> and now, while not everyone is asleep yet, let's throw in a final poll. Uh, which Drupal helper you would like to have next in test helpers? Please type the name of Drupal service or function with which you usually suffer the most in your unit tests. You can write the renderer, file system, permission handler, or any other service, the pain of which is still in your mind. <laughs> so just type something that you <laughs> can remember with last unit test, or maybe even, oh, permissions. Yeah, I, I already thinking about permissions handler and renderer too. For events, I already implemented the helper, so since permissions is the most wanted one, and uh, okay, I will prioritize it. The uh, renderer, plugins. Yeah, thank you for your feedback. Uh, I will take a note about them, and uh, I think permissions is the most interesting one because uh, renderer is pretty complex uh, service, uh, but maybe for renderer I can invent something too. So let, let's move on, uh, and uh, you, you can add uh, more uh, results here, and uh, the results will be uh, saved, so I will analyze them and add uh, something later. So permissions is the most wanted one, as I see. Okay, let's move on. Uh, a couple of words about the roadmap. Uh, I have no strict plan yet, just ideas what we could add and improve. The first item is about adding new stops for more services. And I already got the feedback from you, and I'm continuously doing this. When a new service comes to me, I'm trying to create a universal stop instead of mocking only for the one current case. And the next item is about uh, integrating with more feature-rich prophecy and macro libraries in addition to PHP unit. Those libraries can significantly simplify some things, but for now, uh, I don't want to force users to stick with one of those libraries, so just use it only raw PHP unit API for now. So maybe in future, I've uh, not yet decided about this, and maybe with your help, I add something for PHP unit, uh, for prophecy and mockery users. And together with unit test, we also have kernel tests. And yes, they are much simpler to write. And I think Drupal already provide enough API to cover all cases. But maybe in future I will find something to do in this area. Uh, and the last but the most tricky one is about moving features to Drupal core. Nobody likes to install additional modules, especially if they are just for testing. So 
I would be glad to have some features from my module push it into Drupal core functionality to make life of unit testers, writers happier because uh, no one wants to install additional dependencies and having it out of the box will be pretty convenient. So let's see what happens with this area. And uh, what ideas do you have? Don't be shy, just submit feature requests and we will discuss them in the tracker. So now, are you ready to use test helpers in your projects? Then please give a star and subscribe to new releases or even better, join the development because together we can make the module more universal and more useful. And now that's really all from my side. Thank you for your attention and don't forget the appeal. Join the development. Let's do the making life of unit test writers easier together. But probably you have a lot of questions, right? Remember that you could add them right uh, during the presentation. Let's look what we have. And uh, since we have uh, only one question for now, what was the example module that uses test helpers? Uh, this is the open telemetry module uh, that is available on Drupal.org. I can scroll to this slide. Yeah, this one, Drupal.org project open telemetry. This module provides uh, um, open telemetry library available for Drupal so you can uh, provide traces, especially it's useful for decoupled uh, projects when you have something like React on the front end and Drupal on the back end. And via this module, you can see a full trace, including Drupal, even Drupal SQL queries. And also, uh, my module includes all uh, examples from the presentation, so you can just download the module and uh, Exec all, execute all tests locally and debug them and see how they work. And I see more uh, questions. Where can we find the slides? Uh, I will share this presentation. Maybe I can put the link to it to the description of my test helpers module to make it available for all people. Uh, do core maintainers accept tests written with test helpers? Uh, I don't know because now uh, I use it only for our custom modules and our projects, but uh, if they just work pretty stable and convenient, uh, I see no reasons to restrict <laughs> uh, uh, core maintainers to accept them. So now you can use them for uh, your custom projects for your modules like uh, mine open telemetry module and uh, uh, you all you, we also can replace even kernel test to unit test with this approach especially the test that uh, requires some api for uh, working with entities uh, they can be simply replace it uh, what the questions do we have so how are you generating those reports that uh, show the coverage? Uh, just uh, PHP, run PHP unit uh, with coverage uh, flag uh, and uh, render the uh, XML file. Uh, there are several options, uh, can't remember the exact one, uh, but it can uh, generate the HTML report and the XML report and even text report. So you can use this approach for your own tasks. And uh, yeah, we have, since that's all, questions. Let me check, maybe there are more questions. Listen, what about using AI to generate unit tests? Maybe it will work, but uh, for tests, even uh, <laughs> humans can't find a good approach, uh, but uh, artificial intelligence, I don't know what it can invent new, <laughs> because uh, unit testing, <laughs> the AI logic should be 
tes, uh, co covered by unit tests by humans. And maybe you can try. <laughs> uh, what else we have here? And seems that's it for now. And also you can ask uh, directly now and uh, the host of this session will write me in the meeting chat about this. But since that's all, so thank you for your attention. And if you still have some questions, you can reach me by email. I can jump to my contacts. Yeah. Yeah, so you can write me by email, by uh, direct message using Drupal.org, or maybe in Slack. And uh, you can just try, start trying to use my module in a single unit test, and uh, it's not restrict you to, not force you to use it in all unit tests, just can start using it with one unit test, and. If it will work for you, you uh, start using it <laughs> in, the, in all the next uh, unit tests. And thank you again for your attention. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to see the audience because uh, the remote <laughs> uh, experience is not as offline, but I'm glad that I have this opportunity because I had the problems with visa and online is a very good opportunity to get some little amount of DrupalCon. And thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>